Jesus. We decree that we gather in your name, the name of Jesus, that is above every name. Lord, we thank you for the privilege, Lord, of coming into this place. And Lord, we believe that you have a will, a purpose, and a plan, Father, for your altar team, Almighty God. So we each yield ourselves unto you, Lord. And we just thank you for this privilege. And God, in 2021, we decree this is going to be the greatest year this church has ever known. We believe, Lord God, that this is the year of revival. Even in the midst of the darkness and the trouble, this is the year for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Let it be so, Almighty God. And Lord, use us as your people in a mighty way that we are prepared and ready to move in all that you have for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. And I am, I'm excited about 2021. I know that there are glorious things getting ready to take place. And I've been saying it to you for many, many years that there is the day that is coming that multitudes are going to flow into this church. And it's going to be by some type, and I don't know what, but a manifestation of the moving of God that people are going to realize their need for the Savior. And I believe they're going to come in this place, and we are going to have to have every one of you, and I can see people lined up behind you. I even got to imagining it may be that you will take a group of whatever, 10, over in the corners and we'll just have to minister to all these people. So get ready, amen? amen. And make sure, there's one thing I'm going to read here, but make sure that your life is right with Jesus Christ. You know, don't be doing whatever out here and then think, well, I'll get in and I'll repent. No, let's be ever ready for what amen. God wants to do in and through us. Uh, I just want to interject something right here. Um, Robert and I was talking with Pastor Jeremy today about some things. And I think the thing that is so strong on my heart right now is unity. And I can't stand up in front of the whole church and say, Now everybody, we're going to be unified today. Amen. <laughs> That'd be nice, but that's not the way it works. It is a work of the Holy Spirit. I, I acknowledge that. But then I think we can be positioned to allow God to bring us in that unity. If you'll remember on the day of Pentecost, and uh, we could all look at those passages together, but let me just remind you of some of the things that we see there. You see, Jesus before then had said, go and tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power. And we know that there was probably five to 600 people that heard that, but we know there ended up being an only 120 in the upper room. But you know, they went and they hung out, if you will, seeking God and waiting to be endued with power. Now, they didn't know what that was going to look like, but if Jesus said that it was going to come, then they desired it. Now, listen to the word. They desired it. They wanted that. So when they met in that upper room, they were there not to pray for sister so-and-so and brother do that over here, which that's all fine and good. But they came to be endued with power. Amen. They had a purpose. They had a motive. And they were there because the Lord said they could have it. But brothers and sisters, I want you to know that God is speaking to us in this hour. That there is going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There is going to be revival. There is going to be multitudes that flow into Zion. There is going to be the revival fires that move among us. And we see the signs and the wonders and the miracles. It is going to happen, brother and sister. And I want it to happen right here at Park West. And I want it right now. How about you? So when we come together, I, I am trusting that our heart beats. Yes, we want uh, people to be healed and we want to pray for this. And uh, you know me well enough. I'm praying about our leadership and I'm praying about these ungodly laws that's trying to be presented in our nation that just literally makes me sick. But I want you to know, and that's important, but when we come together and we're in one mind and one accord. Say it again. Accord. accord. When we are in one accord, that's when the suddenly is going to come. Amen. So be praying about this one accord. That we come with a purpose. We come 
because we're coming on the drawing power of the Spirit of God. And I believe that's what He's doing today. And I know I can't draw to Him for anybody else but myself, but we can sure pray that He will draw us like never before. Amen? And I am so grateful, and I know you are, that the prayer team is going to get to come back in because, you know, the Bible says that people are born of the incorruptible Word of God. And we know what that is. That is the Word. It is incorruptible. So we need to be getting the Word of God into their lives. So, you know, be sure that you go back. And, and I know I used to practice a lot with my dog. You know my story. And I'd practice getting that dog saved and practice getting that dog to come back to the Lord. And I'd show him how to be filled with the Holy Ghost. It was a sanctified dog. Sanctified dog. But, you know, use what you will to be prepared prepared and ready that when you open up your Bibles, you know, you can find, sometimes still, I'll have to go back to my concordance and find passages. That's okay. I don't care how you do it. Just have it in your, your Bible in a way that you can go into those passages and share those with individuals. The Word of God, is I've also said today, is the anchor of the soul. You know, the mind can go crazy. It can go in a lot of different directions. But when you give them the Word of God, for example, salvation. I went to the altar every Sunday as a little girl. I mean, every time they sung just as I am, I'm running to the altar. Because there was the drawing power of the Spirit of God. Something else. Pray for the convicting power of the Spirit of God yes. to come into our place. I remember yes. in the Baptist church holding on to the back of the pew and doing this because the Spirit of God was drawing me and dealing with my heart. So let's let's pray about that. But I'd go to the altars, get on my knees, and I'll get around me and pray. And we'd get up there and be going, Hallelujah, glory to God. And I still feel as lost as a goose. If somebody would have opened the Word of God and said, here's what the Scripture says in Romans 10, blah, blah, blah. And if you call upon the name of the Lord, you would be saved. Do you believe that Jesus died and was raised from the grave the third day? Well, then you're part of the way there. So let's call Him. Let's ask Him to come into your... If somebody had shown me that... I wouldn't have been running to those altars every Sunday. So when we give people the Word, the Word of God, they can go out and when the enemy would say, you're not saved like he did to me, I'd say, well, you old devil, you just look at this. He said, if I called upon the name of the Lord, I would be saved. Devil, I did. Now you be gone in Jesus' name. Because I had the Word. I had the truth. And I could hang my life upon the Scripture because God's Word is truth. Amen? Amen? Amen. You know, um, I would like to get to you all and you can let me know. Does, does anybody have the uh, scriptures that I wrote on ministering comfort, the comfort scriptures? Is there anybody, I should say, does not have that? Everybody has it then. Come on, people. Okay, it, it is scriptures that that um, I felt like the Lord really gave to me that bring comfort. It's just called scriptures that bring comfort. We had that in prayer watch, so some of you may have that. Um, but I'll be glad to email those to you. And the reason I say that is there are so many people right now that are discouraged. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of people, they're not having the vision for 3,000 people and for this revival. They're more focused on what they see on the news, which can be very discouraging. Okay, so I want to read these passages quickly, and I'm not going to hold you much longer. But in Isaiah 60 and 1 through 5 in the Amplified Bible, I may not read all of this, but it says, Arise, and the subject there is you. You arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Shine. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. That is a powerful verse. The scripture instructs us to arise from oppression. There are times it comes upon me, and when it does, I'm like David in Psalms 42 when he says, Oh, my soul, why are you cast over inside? What, what is wrong with you, David? Why are you depressed? Why are you oppressed? What's wrong with you, David? You mean if I ask myself a question, the men and the white goats won't come and carry me away? No, they won't. 
And when I've asked the Lord, you know, or said, Lord, what's wrong with me? You know, David said, hope thou in God. He instructed himself, hope thou in God. And so I've asked myself, what's wrong? Sometimes I know. I might have gotten a phone call. I can hear some pretty horrific things in counseling. And uh, I just sometimes that will try to weigh on me and I have to give that to the Lord. But you know, when that tries to weigh, what I do is I oppose the spirit of heaviness by resisting Him in the name of Jesus. And then I find the promise of God that opposes what the enemy's trying to do. Now let me say to you, it may not be anything specifically that you are oppressed or depressed about, but it may be just a demonic spirit that has come to discourage you and try to weigh on you. If I don't know what's going on, I will just go right ahead and I'll say, you foul demon of hell, I resist you in the name of Jesus. You are not going to weigh on me with oppression. One morning I was getting ready, just looking in the mirror, doing my thing, and I was getting ready to come over to the church and this all at once, this weight came over me. I don't know if you've ever had it, but it is just the kind that you can hardly breathe. It just weighed on me. And I paused, and you know, it's easy to, if you will, to yield to that, but I just stopped and I started against that devil in the name of Jesus and coming against him through the power of the name of Jesus. And I want you to know as soon as I got the name of Jesus out of my mouth, I felt that thing lift. It was like a weight rolled off of me and I felt like then I could fly. You know, I could just fly in the heavenly. So listen, demons are real. But you have authority over yes, demonic spirits. Right. I am standing amazed at the people who come into the counseling arena. And they'll say, for example, I was sitting in my room and this dark, ugly thing was sitting across from me. It had a black cloak around its head. Well, do I think they saw it? Absolutely. They're coming for counseling, okay? And I said, well, what did you do about that thing? Well, I just pray. I just said, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Well, there's nothing wrong with saying Jesus and praying. But you know, I said, you know what you're supposed to do with that thing? You demand it. You demand that thing to get out of your house in the name of Jesus. It doesn't have a right there. And we've got people that is suffering from de the demons that is tormenting them and coming against them. And these people do not know the truth. But you know, Pastor Jeremy has been preaching that for the last two Sundays. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And he got my altar packet, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so we are to rise from depression. And that's what we want to encourage our people to do. You don't have to stay depressed. Shine, the scripture says. Your light. Who's that? Jesus. He has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, now listen, darkness shall cover the earth and dense darkness all peoples but the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you yes. you know I talk to people and sometimes and they can just act like everything is wonderful and they don't have a care in the world and then I can get them but just a few minutes later and my goodness they're experiencing a lot of trouble and I personally have not met a single person that is not dealing with something I mean, I'm, I'm very serious. People are dealing with a lot of things that's trying to come against them. And you know, it makes me just angry. It just makes me angry. Especially when I see my brothers and sisters in Christ that love the Lord and they're serving Him and that old devil will try to come against them in, in so many ways. You know, I told the Lord I was reading the scripture to Him because He didn't know it was in there. <laughs> And I said, Lord, if there was ever darkness that covered our earth, our earth, we have darkness today. There is gross darkness, dense darkness, and it seems like it's over all people. You know, sometimes I can just be about my business and, and I can feel it. It's like it's tangible. It's almost like walking through jello. It's it's dark and it tries to weigh on us. I mean, greater than I have ever experienced in my whole life. But then this says, but the Lord shall arise upon you. And I told God, I said, God, it's high time that you begin to rise upon us in the midst of the darkness. And Lord, that people will see your glory upon us. 
I believe that can happen where you work. I can believe that it can happen when you're in the grocery store. That you carry the glory of God. That the light is upon you and shines in you and through you. And I believe that this is going to be the year we're going to see it like never before. But be expecting it. Don't let the darkness dictate to you that it's just dark and it's going to be dark. Bless God, I believe in that every one of us, because we house the light of Jesus Christ, it will dispel the darkness. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, Glory yeah. to God. And nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. So I do believe that not only are we going to have an effect here at Park West Church, and we're talking a lot about community. Uh, Sue, you'll remember this, but we used to have community evangelism. And for one one mile radius of this church, Robert had a map made, and we would mark every street that we had covered. And you heard the statistics about how many people are unchurched. And of course, I know now it's a different day, but you know, I'm just thinking about how God can we again reach the people. Uh, many of you won't remember this, but some of you will. There was a little house that sat right down here on the corner of this property. And uh, Robert and I decided, well, we're just going to go down there. We're going to knock on their door, too. And we went down there, and they looked at us, and they said, we have been living here, and they told how many years, and nobody has ever invited us to that church. Wow. And I said, well, you're being invited. We would love to have you. We prayed with them. They were here the next Sunday. So a lot of times, you know, we think, well, it wouldn't make a big difference, but it does make a big difference. Inviting somebody to come to the house of the Lord and enjoy the presence of God. So I believe this is the year, I really do. And I believe that not only here in our community, but that nations are going to come to the light of Jesus Christ. Amen. Whether you know it or not, yes. people right now yes. are is yes. praying for the United States yes. of America. Yes. They know that their very government stands and depends upon what happens yes. in this nation. That's yes. right. And uh, I'll just add this. There are demons that's roaring on every side We're trying to work through leadership to destroy this nation. Yes. But I decree yes. this night in yes. the name of yes. Jesus, no devil yes. is going to destroy yes. the United yes. States yes. of America. Yes. And I also decree the word of the Lord that the gates of hell yes. shall yes. not yes. prevail yes. against yes. the church. Yes. Amen. Yes. That ain't going to happen. Yes. No devil is going to have this yes. nation Lord in Jesus' God. name. Right. And I'm believing that the church is beginning Beginning to rise up and taking a stand and standing for what God would have us to do. Yes. And that is fact is in Matthew 16, 18 and 19. And Jesus then went on to say, and I will give unto thee the keys, the authority of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth or forbid on earth shall be forbidden in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose or allow on earth shall be loosed and allowed in heaven. I want you to know the authority that God has given to you. You have that that's in your mouth called the tongue. God wants us to begin to decree and declare. We are going to speak against what the enemy is trying to do in the name of Jesus. I do pray for leaders to get born again and come to God. But I say, Lord, if they're not Remove them. Yes. Just get them yes. out, God. We need people in there, Father, that's going to lead our nation in holiness and righteousness. And if you keep hearing, this nation was founded on a covenant. And God's still honoring that covenant. But we, the people of God, need to enforce it with the declaration of our faith. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, Father, I have given to your people, Lord, what I feel you laid upon my heart. And God, I thank you for every one of them. I know how precious they are to you. They are precious to me, Lord God. And we see the importance of this ministry. So, Father, I just speak blessings over every one of your people in the name of Jesus. You know the very things, Lord God, that they need in their personal lives and in their families. Father, I come in agreement with them, Lord, for salvation to come to their families in the name of Jesus. I agree with them, Lord, that those that are away from you are coming back to you in the name of Jesus. I agree that every need they have is met in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we are hungry. We want more of you, Father. Take us to the next level of glory in the name of Jesus. Let us soar upon the wings of your Holy Spirit, Almighty God. Can we thank you and praise you for the lost that's coming in here to Park West Church and that you are preparing us and equipping us 
Father, to minister to the multitudes. Lord, we thank you. And you said to ask for the rain in the time of the latter rain. It's time, God. We ask you for the rain to come down upon our church and upon this city and upon our nation and the church at large. And Lord, that even your church, Lord, that we will turn from our wicked ways. We will repent of our sins, Almighty God, and turn to you, Lord, because our nation, our land needs to be healed, Lord. And only you can do that. So God, awaken the church. Stir the church in the name of Jesus. Where we've been asleep, Almighty God, shake us, Lord, that we will arise from the depression and the oppression in the name of Jesus and be endued with your power from above on high. God, we believe you to do it. In the precious name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Fill us afresh and anew with your spirit, Almighty God. Fill us to overflow in the name of Jesus. And we thank you and we praise you for that. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.